years ago, we had new uh, protective coverings put on the outside of the windows. There were protective coverings there, but they were in need of being replaced. And that was uh, done by Bob Johnstone. As he was putting the coverings on, he said he was taken up with the quality of the windows, that he had a hard time focusing on what he was supposed to be doing because he was enjoying the windows uh, so much, especially the color of the windows. The stained glass is held in by lead, and lead has a lifetime of 100 years. And we were celebrating the centennial of the chapel, so the lifeline of the lead was coming to an end. Stained glass windows that would be 100 years old, after 100 years, facial features would just have blurred out. And if you notice, the facial features on our windows are very strong yet, and very warm. As somebody said to me just this past Sunday as we went through, she said, their faces seem so smooth and rounded, real life, lifelike. Some stained glass windows have paint in the glass, some have it on the glass. As the artist would do one color of painting, he would, the artist would put an excess amount of paint on the glass and then with brushes work off the excess now usually we paint the other way, but they would work off the excess painting. And when they were finished with one color, they would fire the window to 1200 degrees to fuse the paint with the glass. So every time a new color was done, the glass had to be fired. And so that's why stained glass windows are uh, such a treasure and today you know, are very, ex uh, very expensive. The paintings above the altar in the Maria Angelorum large chapel, the community chapel, the, the one right above the main altar and the two on either side of it represent the three Franciscan orders. The middle uh, painting shows St. Francis in a vision of Jesus and Mary, and that represents the first Franciscan order, the friars, the friar minors, the Capuchins, the uh, friar conventuals, the men. To the right of it, th there's a painting of St. Clair with St. Francis when Clare was received by Francis, and she began the second Franciscan order, the poor Clares, or they were the cloistered women. And sometimes in, in those days, they weren't called the poor clares, they were referred to as the poor women. The other painting to the right shows Francis with Elizabeth of Hungary and King Louis of France. And that represents the third order of Franciscans, which has two branches for secular people to which Queen Elizabeth of Hungary and uh, King Louis of France were lay people, so they belonged to the third order secular or for lay people. The other branch are the third order uh, regular, which are people like myself who are third order Franciscans, but we have taken vows, so we're called third order uh, regular. So those three paintings represent the three Franciscan orders. The two paintings, uh, one on either side of the main altar, uh, the one uh, to the north is uh, St. Margaret and in a vision of Jesus. And in the days when the chapel was built, there was a special devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So that uh, represents that devotion. And on the other side to the south is Mary as a young woman, the Annunciation, when the angel came to announce to Mary that she was to be the mother of, of Jesus. Those five paintings, plus the paintings in the Adoration Chapel, were done by Thaddeus von Zukotinsky, who was uh, from Europe and had been trained in Munich and had come to the United States in the 1880s, I think it was. And he first worked in Milwaukee, and then he moved his business to Chicago. So those paintings were done in Chicago and then brought uh, to lacrosse here and mounted on the wall. There's one painting under, under the balcony uh, in the back of the chapel which is circular. The master painter for the chapel 
was Bernhard uh, Hillig, who was from Copenhagen. And he had come to the United States to St. Louis in preparation for the World's Fair of 1904 that was going to be held in St. Louis. When he was found there as an artist, the person who was in charge of our interior decoration for the chapel, Adolf Liebig, uh, Mr. Liebig hired Mr. Uh, Hillig to come and be the master painter. Well, Mr. Hillig had come over without his family from Copenhagen, and so the sisters helped him to find a place to, to live while he worked here on the chapel. And during that time, he was able to bring his wife and two sons with him to La Crosse. And then the sisters helped him to find a place to live for his family. And then while they were here, they had a daughter born. And because of what the sisters had done uh, for the Hillig family, Bernhardt painted that circular painting that's under the balcony.